will be here, the crew will be here, and we'll make a decision then if we should deflate it. And if that happens, we'll bring her down. But I mean, I'm so honored. Uh, I showed uh, a puppy, I would imagine, maybe about a decade ago. Then I had Split Rocker, uh, maybe I'd say about three, four years ago. And to be back here at Rockefeller Center with a seated ballerina, uh, you know, I have to pinch myself. What, what an honor. To me, this is the center of the world. There's so much taking place here. There are hundreds of thousands of people every day coming through, all different cultural backgrounds, all different ages. And, uh, you know, it's spectacular. It's uh, such a vital place. Uh, the piece is being installed, I did this with Kiehl's and the Art Production Fund to bring awareness that May is the International Missing Children's Month. And, uh, you know, the seated ballerina, I think, is an image that conveys optimism and a sense of potential for the future. You can see it in the ballerina. And I want really every uh, viewer that uh, comes through Rockefeller Center to feel that uh, enthusiasm and a sense of potential for their own life. But what we're uh, really dealing with and what we don't want to forget are the missing children. And they all also have the same type of uh, desire and potential and uh, want to be able to fulfill their uh, parameters, what they could achieve in life. And uh, they're not able to do that. Over 465,000 children last year alone in the United States went missing. Uh, I would say uh, about 20 some years ago, uh, I was a left behind parent. So I have a son that was abducted, a parental abduction, and he was taken to another country. I had custody in the United States. Uh, I was never able to bring my son back home, but I wanted to maintain, uh, you know, kind of confidence, a faith in humanity. I was losing that. And so I turned to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Uh, they had the idea of creating the International Center for Missing and Exploited Children. I became involved as a board member, and it's been a vehicle that's been able to let me try to not have the same situation uh, happen to other people, and uh, to be participating in really trying to even av uh, avoid even worse situations for the missing and exploited children. A larger uh, group of people. And, you know, this work, City Ballerina, will have a lot of different uh, meanings to people but there'll be certain shared things. You know, I, I always just wanted to participate, so from the time that I was a child, what I was excited about was to be in a dialogue, to be in a dialogue with artists like, you know, Roy Lichtenstein and Warhol and Dali and, you know, Manet, Picabia. That's my joy. That's really uh, my pleasure. That's what I value in life. Uh, the economic aspect of the work, it's an abstraction. Uh, the, the way I look at it that I feel the best about it really is that society is, you know, kind of assuming a certain responsibility by putting that amount of value on it that they'll protect it in the future. So uh, then I think, okay, maybe it'll be around a little longer than if nobody had any economic value to it. You know what the arts do so effortlessly is connect all the human disciplines. And when you're involved with art, automatically you can become involved with physics, philosophy, sociology, theology, aesthetics, a dance, uh, you know, all the human disciplines.